Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. So when you think about long straddles, let, let's go on in and actually pull up a long straddle. I'm going to go on into here. Oops. Uh, I'm going to pull up uh, using the Trade King Profit and Loss Graph. Let's pull up a long straddle. And let's look at, I'm not going to pick any particular stock in general. It's not intended to be a recommendation at all, but let's just go in and let's go IBM and let's pull up uh, let's go October contracts in IBM and we're gonna how we'd add, add them this is our chain we got the calls on this side we got the puts on this side uh, we got 32 days to expiration and we're gonna buy this one we're gonna and buy that one we're gonna add that to the calculator Okay, hey, that's what our long strata looks like right now. Now, let's pay attention to the Greeks, though, and let's look at how the Greeks are working. We're not quite at the money, which is going to throw up our great. Let's, let's see. Let's plot it right at the money. And then we'll hit calculate, and then that should affect our Greeks here. But if I look at this, to start off with, I have a very low net delta as the underlying moves. Um, I'm buying one of the call and I'm buying one of the put. Now over here, this is, a, this is worth noting, when we look at this, the delta of the call option here is 51, not 0.51. And this is actually addresses uh, uh, delta neutral in that if it's 0.51, that is the delta for the option. But since we are doing one option contract, and that represents 100 shares, this delta is actually displayed as 51, not 0.51. As a matter of fact, if I do this two by two, all right, you will see these deltas double because we are buying two contracts, so it's 200 times 0.51. All right, but let's make things simple and let's go back to this, all right? Now this net delta is calculated, the combined number is right here. So now as we go deeper and deeper in the money, and we'll even grow, bring that up, let's move the stock a little bit here. And as we move, let's say the stock goes up, uh, let's plot it over here, let's go, stock goes to 121, and we plot that point. Our net delta on our position is now 12. That means if the stock moves one dollar, our option contract, our position will only make twelve dollars when you look at it on a position basis. And gamma right here is only nine, which is saying that on the next point movement, we only expect delta to actually go up another nine points, which will translate to our position of the delta increasing nine dollars. So let's do that again. Click again. Go to 122, and now we notice that now our position acts for every dollar movement up, we only make $21. Now look at the, the Greeks here. This, this put, even though we've already had this thing move $2 in our favor in this instance, the put delta is still at negative 39. That means for every point movement up, that hurts our put, and our put loses 39 deltas, and our, our call only gains 60 deltas. All right, now let's go back to the same scenario and let's look at a near-term option. Let's plot it right at 120 and let's go and move the day's expiration to that final week. As a matter of fact, this week a lot of times get, is called gamma week. All right, so now let's move at one point and see what happens to our delta with one point remaining. Right then, in a one-point movement, we saw our delta went to 26 and our gamma went to 24. That means in the next point movement, we're going to really get something here. 
And if we move to 22 and we hit plot, now we see the delta is already at 50 in this instance, and we just had a two-point movement in, on the stock. What was it before? Maybe 20 at that moment? This shows you the explosiveness, and this is what I want when I'm doing long straddles. I need my long call to get to one delta as fast as possible in order if I'm right and the call is going up. Now, theta is a much bigger number in that it's $24 here, but when I look at a straddle and I'm thinking about buying them near term, I'm not thinking about theta. I'm not thinking this is... I'm thinking this is either all or none. If I pay $3 for a near-term straddle, I'm thinking I am either going to get this thing to move $3 or I'm not. And if it doesn't, hopefully it'll move one or two, and I'll at least get out uh, and be able to salvage some of the premium that I paid for it. And this is actually a reason why I'd rather do long straddles than strangles. On a long straddle, we looked at the stock was right at 120. What are the odds that it's going to stay right at 120 after this big news event? Right? You should use, hopefully it'll move at least one in either direction in the case of IBM here. All right? So I know that I'm not going to get out exactly, uh, the, I'd be extremely unlucky for that thing to go out right at expiration, right at 120, and I lose my entire investment. Okay. Gamma versus theta. It's what traders are always battling with. And also, let's think about the reverse. We're talking about the long side. We like gamma on the long side. Um, but let's think about gamma uh, when you're short an option contract. You've sold a call spread, and the market's moving with you. You sold a put spread, and the market's going down and going against you. Or you've just sold an option in general, naked. I've sold a naked call. I've sold a naked put. I very rarely have seen any market makers ever remain naked an option contract, a call or a put, in the last week to expiration. But you say, Brian, you just showed me this chart over here. And let's go on in and end. And, uh, what do I got to do? F11, I got to move this thing. You just showed me this chart right here of uh, time decay. And if I'm selling options, look at where I get the most bang for my buck. Yes, you do get a lot of bang and out for the buck. But is the risk worth it? Because if it moves in the money and you're in that last week to expiration or last two weeks, that option contract is going to go against you twice as fast as an option contract is out in this range. So bottom line is option sellers very rarely stay in these positions, albeit even a, a, a credit call spread or a credit put spread within the last week to expiration. If it's anywhere close, they have a tendency to get out. I know you always want to squeeze out that last dime. Oh, I don't want to pay commissions to close the trade. But a lot of people don't understand how much risk they're taking on because of this Greek called gamma and how explosive it makes your delta when it becomes in the money. All right. Oh, uh, i got to take a little drink of water here. Now, the last one, the last Greek that I want to talk about is actually Vega. Vega is uh, the volatility Greek, and it tells you how much an option's theoretical price will change for a corresponding one-point change in the implied volatility of the option contract. The more time premium, the higher the Vega is for an option. Oh, by the way, I said that I kind of like long straddles. I should probably uh, show this up here. Let, let, let me. I actually looked at option chains and volatility charts. Look at what has happened to the volatility. And, and I actually, I did a seminar. Uh, my first seminar that I did for the ISE was back on trading uh, the, the, trading the uh, currency options uh, during a very volatile time. And implied volatilities were enormous. As a matter of fact, that was probably a year ago. And I, if I pull up a one-year chart on vol, you can see it was trading 25, 30, right in that range for a long period of time. So we tried to do butterflies to take advantage of that, and that was the theme of the, the webcast if you want to go back and look at it. But in this day and age, we're at very low volatility. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.ise.com slash podcasts.